Hi and welcome. I'm just really, really thrilled to have uh, Marie with me today. Um, Marie is a longtime, very dear friend, longtime client, and um, so I asked Marie to be with me today because we've been through a lot together over the years. <laughs> Yes, but true. most recently this year, Marie uh, sustained a really severe injury in a bike accident, and uh, we're going to post the picture of the x-ray of what, the, what was actually put in as a brace for your tibia. But I wanted to just kind of have you share a little bit about, you know, what occurred. And... Sure. Um, so I, in April of this year, I was in a bicycle accident where... Um, the edge of a curb struck my tibial plateau and the tibia shattered. Uh, that's what the in, inside of my leg looks like now and I have metal in here because they had to put a casing in um, to have that tibia have the support to heal. Um, but it took three operations and a month in the hospital and a long time of being no weight bearing at all. Uh, even when I came home it was in a wheelchair mm. And I was um, bed bound for quite a quite a long time. Yeah. So what's what's fascinating about and what's valuable about what we're going to share with you is first of all, um, having been a Pilates a person, you know, as somebody who has really practiced Pilates for numbers of years, you're very and you have a reformer at home. You were very aware of, and it's interesting when you shared that. At, as soon as you were able to, right? As soon as I, as soon as I was uh, uh, beginning to have the ability to move my own body and be responsible for it even slightly, I started saying to uh, my partner, "I, I really please bring the reformer down to a floor floor where I can reach it." It was it was at a place I couldn't access it, and uh, a small group of men were gathered together. As you can see, these are a little heavy, and and brought it down. And the minute that it was that it was where I could get at it. I was instantly on it, mm -hmm. and it was, um, it really, it brought tears to my eyes to be on it. Mm -hmm. Because I suddenly had uh, access to my entire body uh, in a way that I totally had not. Um, you know, supported on the reformer with my good leg, but atrophied, <laughs> everything was atrophied. Mm -hmm. Uh, and able to begin to work from the center of my body and mm. feel my whole body. Mm. Um, and even just support this leg in space by just resting it on the bar. Yes. As a very beginning of feeling all of me there. Um, it was one of the most critical steps in the healing process. Mm. Mm -hmm. And working with the reformer in particular, before I could you know, stand up and move around and do anything else has been such an amazingly important part of my return to the ability to walk. Yes. And and I think it's part of why the, the doctors have been a little bit surprised at, you know, they keep predicting when the next thing will happen and then I beat that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is because my relationship to this body of work and to being able to have access to Pilates and, and, and the amazing thing you did with having April, one of your top practitioners, come to my home and work with me. Mm. That was mm. incredible and working with me right where I was at every moment in the journey. Never, I remember our very first session I was scared because I was afraid of being pushed beyond what I could do. Mm. and. It was so totally not that. It was such a deep honoring of exactly where I was, exactly, but in a way that began to give me access to more and more of my three-dimensional body. So, so much of what Marie is sharing with you is so critical to what we're studying about biointelligence, about being a core whisperer. What we're what we're engaging in is not about let's just get in there and just get moving again, but rather what's the quality of how were you? Let's, let's actually lie down for a second sure. and just kind of share a couple of things. Because when Marie talks about you know, the relational way of being with herself, see, she wasn't able to put this foot 
on the bar. All my first stuff would look like this. Right. So what was crucial here was the sense of what we talk about, down the back, up the front. How does uplift happen? How does release happen? If you just think of pushing into the foot bar you, and, and engaging, engaging your stomach, what often is missing is a way in which your body recreates the movement, the, the, the complex movement of relationship of how the ankle, knee, hip, spine work in relationship with one another through flexion, extension, moving in any kind of rotation. So as she's going in and out, and at that point it was more like this because I didn't even have that much flexion in That's this. right. So when April came, one of the first things she gave me was, okay, let's support this. And so then move to here. And this lift yeah. up the front releases that right hip toward this left heel. And getting that sense of heavy hip begins to allow that feeling. And remember then we, we uh, you also have a stretch ease band yes. at home. Yep. So that was a beginning before this foot could right, actually... Well, we, there was wrapping it around here. Wrapping there was here. also just putting the foot in it and, and with all, nothing but really support. That's beginning right. Beginning to do a little bit of extension. So the most important thing here is to not just flop your knee up and down, but to let your hip gets he get heavy as you bend your knee. So you notice how I'm giving her some support right here. And then as you exhale, your hip releases down as your foot goes up. And you see how that talks to your leg in relationship to the front of your spine. So it's that the same context we've been talking about. How does the back of the leg talk to the front of the spine? How does hamstring become a core postural support along with the diaphragm mm -hmm. here? So that, right. And what Marie is really referring to here is with that straightening, how then could she access that foot? Yeah. How could she begin to get the feeling into that foot still without weight bearing? So that's what's so critical. How are you weight bearing without weight bearing? Right. It's how you're being with yourself as a biointelligent being rather than work on the knee, work on the knee. And part of the thing that made um, the move from bed to wheelchair to the to the reformer so profound was bed and wheelchair all of life was about the knee and the tibia the leg yes my whole world became that leg and uh, all of a sudden my world was re-inhabited by the rest of my body. I could access the rest of it. It wasn't about the leg, like mm, mm, completely. And as a matter of fact, like mm. the last thing in the world I needed was any more focus on that leg. Right. It was, but but still that leg as as obviously an integral part of my body, but not. It was about the body, yes. the whole body, including the part that was in recovery. Yes. Stunning. Really stunning. So to begin to place that foot or have that foot be able to be on the foot bar is a whole other experience. Yes. Yeah, and so mostly it was in space or at the very least we, I, we went, started with the lightest, lightest, lightest spring. That's right. And I would come out and this would be doing the real work even with that light spring, but then it'll be just like touching the foot bar. Yes. And then beginning to just drop the heel enough that the, the knee couldn't open yet. It's an encouragement. Yeah. It's a reminder of how does that leg work in relationship to the other side, which is strong. And there was nothing else I was doing in physical therapy that gave me that sense of safety, support, and encouragement for that movement. Mm. Um, everything that the standard physical therapy world offered was very mechanical. 
It was about, okay, let's stretch this muscle so it can do this. Or it was like, okay, just do this motion over and over. Some, you know, just drop the knee like this over mm -hmm. and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, didn't connect the rest to the rest of the body at all. It was, again, only about that knee. As soon as I was on the Pilates machine again, it was like, okay, now I can do this. And even though I can't make the full other move yet, but it would be... Okay, what can I do? That That's right. talks to the whole body. Yes. Okay, I can do that much. Okay. Yes. So there was this period of continually finding more and more space to be able to have the whole body be spoken to, inclusive of the part in recovery. That's right. That's right. And so then the more, the more you get a deeper access through the whole body to support your leg in motion, that then allowed, here the thing we're looking for, foot on the bar, how is your foot opening to allow the ankle to open? Remember there are no muscles that attach to the ankle, so it's foot to lower leg that releases the heel, that allows the membrane in the lower leg to begin to open, that allows the knee to feel supported, that allows internal lift to happen. So there's a deep down the back up the front sensation that has been recreated in Marie's body that is profound. And then bend your knees and just come back in. It was fabulous, Marie. Thank, Thank you, you so Andy. much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you all so much. See you next time.